Right, guys. Um, I'm going to give you a quick demo of how to use the VVE Assistant tool that I wrote. Fair warning, this is something that I wrote for myself. Um, it originally started out as a spreadsheet, and it works fine as a spreadsheet, but this has a, a few more handy options to make life easier, especially if you're thinking about using this for multiple vehicles and platforms. Uh, the spreadsheet is going to require you to <laughs> manually set all the boundaries, and that's a huge time waste where this is a lot more automatic. Now the first thing that you'll see when you open this tool is the zone definitions are not found. Fortunately, it's very easy to get these. So if you go into your, um, your tune file, and let's go to the virtual volumetric efficiency, click show zone numbers, highlight the entire thing, and then you have to do copy with axis. Every time you paste into this tool, always do copy with axis. So we go back in here, zones, I'm gonna say paste from clipboard. It's going to reload it or read it from the clipboard. And you know you can toggle how you want things to look or not if you want. And then just hit save. And at this point, now if I close this and reopen it, it has remembered it. So if I click zones, it's gonna read it. And there we go. And so same thing for everything. These other uh, tables that we're going to input, uh, it's going to save it. So even if you close the app, it'll start with that um, again. So the next thing we have is histogram. So as you can imagine, we're going to use our tune file or our, our um, log file from the scanner. So obviously it goes without saying. The columns and the rows need to be set up. So copy your axis labels as needed to get this thing right. I like the entire thing, copy with axis. Go back in here, paste from clipboard, and there it is. Now, we have two tabs for the VVE table, old and new. The first time we do this for a tuning session, whatever we're working on, they're gonna be the same. So again, we're gonna highlight everything. It looks like, oh, you know what? Let me close and reopen. A real file I don't want to change. Go to vol virtual volumetric efficiency. Uh, we'll just copy this whole thing again with axis. Paste from clipboard. Paste from clipboard. Um, so these three tabs are really the main ones where you're inputting and then this last one. But the delta, this is basically subtracting the old and the new. Right now they're all zero as expected. We haven't made any changes. So then that takes us to this one. Um, and again, we can play with this. I kind of like using the heat map here. And now we have kind of a zone by zone uh, what we want to do. So if I want to say, well, how bad is it? Overall, I could highlight the whole table, do stats for highlighted area. And it shows me uh, negative six and positive four. So if we're using that rule of thumb, <clears throat> stay between negative five and positive five, we're doing pretty good. Our average looks good. It's almost 1% rich. Standard deviation, though, uh, of 2 is a little bit high. So we probably have some room for improvement on this. But I could easily do the same thing, like for just this one area, and say for this one, hey, our standard deviation isn't bad. Actually, we're below 1. Um, we are a little bit lean. All of our numbers are positive, and our average is right around 3. So you can use those stats to kind of guide you. So the way this would work then would say, all right, well, let me just focus on this zone. So I'm going to copy just this. We're dealing with the 70 and 72 row. So we'll go here and we're going to say 70 and 72, paste special, multiply by percent, calculate coefficients, copy the whole table with axis. And then I could go back here to the new one because we just generated a new one. Or I can stay here on the paste special table and just click this link and notice these numbers will change. So there they go. Um, and so we could do the whole table, right? We could just do copy, go in, <clears throat> go in here, and we can just say paste special, multiply by percent. And if you know you want to interpolate, obviously you can do that as well. We'll do calculate coefficients. Copy with axis, go back in here, drop this in, 
and now those numbers look pretty pretty good so again we'll right click we'll do stats and our standard deviation uh, went down to 1.3 so not bad so obviously we could keep going now a few other options up here um, you know you can depending on how you like this um, you can kind of set it up however you want to um, and use these options uh, percent um, is probably what you want but if you wanted to look at the actual numbers as in whatever this VE number is, grams per second, or cylinder filling, whatever these numbers are, those are going to be the same ones. Like if I wanted to do this, I'd have to do copy. And then when I go back into here, I would just have to do a normal paste because we're not pasting by percent, right? So if I do paste, calculate coefficients, copy with axis, and then let's go back in, see if we did any good and go back to percent so there you go you can see and our standard deviation went down yet again to 1.1 from 1.3 so we're making some good progress here now you'll also notice um, there's kind of some noise right we have some very little numbers that are hovering right at zero wouldn't it be nice to get rid of those well we can you're going to use the squelch and notice this is now saying anything between negative 0.5 and positive 5, ignore it. So now we can really focus on the, the major outliers. This guy here is also going to get rid of any super large numbers. So if you have some outliers, maybe you had a weird transient and it's showing like, oh, you had a, a positive 50 fuel trim. Well, this, if it's above 20, is going to get rid of it. And then the same thing for the negative. Um, so that's the, the major functionality. Now there's one other cool thing. You can merge another histogram. So I first ran into this when I was logging. I got pulled over by a cop for speeding. I had quite a bit of data, but I was not done collecting data. So I resumed and I created another log, but now I have two logs. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to merge them and average them, which you can do. Another probably more useful use case is when you have broken out your closed loop and your open loop, your power enrichment. So here's this guy. Copy with axis. We're going to go back in here. And we have a few options. Well, I trust the narrow bands more than the wide band, so I don't want to average them. And the average is only going to average if I have a conflict. So if I had a closed loop and power enrichment in this same cell, it would average them. But since I don't trust it, I'm gonna say use existing, which in this case are the narrow bands, and disregard the new value, which is power enrichment. Could do the other way, use the power enrichment, disregard narrow bands, but we're gonna do this guy. Merge, and then we're gonna see a whole bunch of new data populate down here. And there we go, here's, you know, when I'm on the throttle. And paste special, you can see, hey, not bad. We're doing pretty good. Uh, life is life is good. Now you notice this is part of uh, not ready for uh, human consumption at this point. It's internal tool for me. Sometimes these labels will go missing. Um, I thought I had it figured out, but still not yet. So to get those back, it's kind of an annoyance. It's not super necessary, but again, we'll just copy with axis. And then whenever I go in and I pop in a new one, they will come back. So they come back, I thought I had it fixed. So again, it is what it is, right? Um, that's it as far as the major functionality on here. Um, obviously you have just some copy stuff if you want to copy them off. But again, like if I close this and I reopen it, all of the values are here, you'll notice. The labels are missing. Again, it's kind of an annoyance. I'll hopefully have that fixed in a future version. But all of this stuff is here, and I can just continue where I'm going. Now, where you will likely have problems, this should work for the Gen 5 uh, VVE table, um, but the layout is different. So you may run into issues anytime you're switching, even if it's between Gen 4 tunes. Um, with the different number of uh, RPM columns and map uh, rows. Um, so if you ever get in trouble, and so for instance, I have this, right? So this is a Gen 5. So we'll go here and we can see our KPA has now been replaced with the 
map barrow ratio. If we cop copy this with axis, or actually show zone numbers, copy with axis. We go here, we can redefine our zones the same way. We'll do a paste from clipboard. And make sure you hit save. Now at this point you can see it's saying, I don't really know what to do if things are different. Um, and so you may get errors depending on if you now try to paste in another histogram. Let's see if we can get some type of error here. It seemed to work, but it's not really happy with the zones. So if you ever run into this issue and you just kind of want to wipe the slate clean and start from scratch, click this open folder. And then all of these values in here, you can just delete. And then when you close it and reopen it, you see zones not found and we don't have anything in these tables. So you can kind of start with a clean slate. This should get you started. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions for whatever functionality, um, hit me up, HBT Forms. My username is Cringer, um, and we can go from there. Again, best effort. This isn't really made for other people, but it seemed like there was some interest, so um, I'll let you guys have it. I'll put a link in the description in the video uh, for uh, how to download it. I'll just probably put it on my Google Drive or something like that. Anyway, hope you uh, find some value in this tool. Um, let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.